So there's a comedian out there who lied about being in 9-11. His name is Steve Renazizi. And every year on 9-11, we're just going to go over what he did. I'm sickened uh, by the fact that every comedian has forgiven, forgotten. They've allowed him to just be back. I mean, this is so disgraceful. Some of you might not know the story. So... I'm here to make everybody. You want to know something? Yeah. I've never heard this. I really? know the story, but I haven't heard that. But actual you haven't seen audio. it. Okay, so this is perfect. So we're gonna go over, and this is just every year. Just get ready for it. It's like every <laughs> year on Christmas, or your dad does the same fucking thing that your mom, you know, or whatever. It's a tradition here at Red Bar to just remind people that this guy is the worst. Never forgive is what we're calling it here. So let's look at this uh, Steve Renazizi stuff here uh, today. And first, I guess I'll play you this, uh, the news stories here. These news stories are great. And they're going to set Well, should up. you start with him? No. Okay. The news story sets it up. And Perfect. then we'll, uh, we'll watch here today. You know, because the news, and this is what I love about the news. They know that you might not know anything about it. So they're going to fill you in better than I can. Perfect. You know, these people are professionals. So look at this fucking woman. Looks like Joe Biden. Oh, no. It looks like Elise from Insidious. Love Elise. I love Elise. Listen to this. It is also where we got a shocking confession today. A comedian oh. Oh. admitted to making up a story about being in the World Trade Center during the terrorist attacks in 2001. Steve Ren Renazzi. Uh, Renazzisti. No. Renazzisti. Renazzi, look at this photo they got. Shocking confession. You know, and I never saw these news clips either uh, when this happened. Uh, so this is really something else. Comic apologize for lying about 9-11 escape. Listen to this. Being in the World Trade Center during the terrorist attacks in 2001, Steve Ren Renazzi Renazisti, uh, has said that he was working as a stockbroker in one of the towers when they were hit. He's repeatedly said that was the reason that he left New York to pursue a career in L.A. But the New York Times okay. uncovered that he was indeed a stockbroker in New York City, but that he was working in Midtown, oh. not in the financial district. Oh. He fessed up on Twitter. Mm. In a series of tweets, he said he was an immature young man who made a mistake. He doesn't know nope. why he made up the story. Sorry, no. Nope. truly sorry. Renazisi stars in the comedy show The League and has appeared in several Comedy Central specials. Very good. Now, uh, let's go to this next news clip. Let's see what they say. We got a lot of great clips for you today. Remembering Steve Renazizi's giant lie. Now, this guy's psychotic. I want him back in the hot seat. Uh, let's check this out. ABC News ran this. The day Popular comedian in hot water this morning. Coming clean over a lie he's been telling for 14 years. He's been telling the lie for 14 what? years. And people like Ari Shafir and B see, this is more, you don't need to care about Steve Brown is easy. This is more about the people you do care about. Big J, Ari Shafir, Joe Rogan, all your buddies said this. And we're going to show you those clips. Ari Shafir said this. Yeah, so what? He lied. Really? We're all going to, like, imagine if we all got canceled for lying. I didn't know that he kept the lie for 14, 14 years. years. I oh, wait till you hear. clean, like, really Oh, you're going to be afterwards. so sick and watch this. Popular comedian in hot water this morning. Coming clean in hot water. Lie. He's been telling for 14 years. Steve Ranazisi now admitting he lied about escaping the Twin Towers on 9-11, confessing he wasn't even downtown that day. ABC's David Wright is here with the story. David, good morning. Good morning. Imagine you tell a lie and it's being reported. This is like my dream, man. For the news to turn into Red Bar where they're like, a comedian lied. You know, I get so much shit on YouTube. Why are you talking to me? You must be jealous. Well, okay. Is AB Did ABC get any comment? You must be just jealous of Steve Renazzisi. This would be like, you know, Red Bar is basically this news report here today. Did this guy get any hit? You're just jealous of Steve Renazzisi. You want to be him. You've been brainwashed. Why? The news is doing the same thing as Red Bar here. This is when the news and Red Bar were basically the same show. Check this out. Lara, there have been a few 9-11 liars over the years, oh! borrowing someone else's tragedy to give their own lives meaning or value. But this guy wow. built a career in Hollywood, starting, ironically enough, with Ooh. a job on the show Punked. Well, it turns out he Juice. punked everybody. 
slam. Could you recommend a Doja? I like how he goes, there's been a lot of 9-11 liars over the years. Really? There has? Because I'd like to go over them, too. A lot of 9-11 liars over the years. But this guy, you know, but no, they're all okay with him. It turns out he punked everybody. Could you recommend a Doja? You've probably seen him on those ads so for funny. Buffalo Wild Wings. Hi, I'm Steve, and I've helped millions claim their fantasy football riches. Or starring in the FX sitcom The League. Let's get back to the draft order, please. His stand-up special is due to air on Comedy Central this weekend. Steve Ranazisi, a comedian whose star has been rising ever since he wow. lied about where exactly he was on I'm September 11, 2001. So you were aware, where were you when oh, 11 happened? 54th floor of the so South you're in Tower. in the second tower. So yeah. now they cut to his interview with Pauly Shore. We're going to watch that full thing. They're like, where were you on 9-11? He's like, 52nd floor, bro. Sick. So cool. There's like a guy threw a copy machine at me. It was nuts. Where exactly he was on September 11th, 2001. So you were aware, where were you when 9-11 happened? 54th floor of the so South Tower. So you were in tower. the second tower. Yeah. In 2009, he told Pauly Shore and friends he was working at Merrill Lynch when the first plane struck the North Tower. I walk outside, I see the fire and everything, and then I watch oh, the second plane hit the second tower. The story... This, to me... Really, it's like, again, I go back to that Christmas thing. You know, like every year on Christmas, you do the same shit, right? You watch that BB gun movie, you know? Yeah, a Christmas story. And it never gets old. This to me is like that. It never gets old. This is like the best fool's lie. And the fact that the whole world knows it's true. You know, I don't got to fucking sit here and beg you to believe me like I always have to. So the fact that this is happening is just... This is just the best thing that's ever happened to me, in fact. I'm so glad 9-11 happened. Vivid on Mark Maron's podcast. Listen to this. And then it just, bang. While you were standing right there. Well, it was like underneath that giant overpass that was... Uh, and all your co-workers were upstairs? Yeah. A few small details have changed over the years. For oh. instance, in one Look interview, at that face. he didn't see the second plane hit. He heard it. And then I heard the plane hit our tower. His route home changes, too. Wow. Got to walk across the Brooklyn Bridge back to Brooklyn, where we oh live. Oh, my God. Later, a different bridge. I walked across the Manhattan Bridge. But the essence of the story that he told as recently as a week ago was that the trauma of 9-11 convinced him to quit the financial industry and move to L.A. to get into ah, show business. of course. And it was all a lie. He never worked at Merrill Lynch, wasn't Woo! in Lower Manhattan on 9-11, in fact, Merrill Lynch didn't even have an office in the Twin Towers. Wow! When the New York Times confronted him, Renazisi came clean. I was not at the Trade Center that day, he said in a statement. I don't know why I said this. This was inexcusable. I am truly, truly wow. sorry. Wow. So he didn't even come clean? He got no, caught he got and then caught admitted, caught and they and then admitted it. And every comic within a day. I'm not kidding. I wish we had some of the footage. All of them were like, yeah, who cares? It's just a stupid lie, man. Come this on, we like all tell This is even more crazy than I thought This it was. is, and I, I, want, I don't times. feel safe with him free. No. This is like in Canada, they let out, remember that story in Canada, there was a guy on a Greyhound bus and he cut someone's head off? Remember yeah. this? Oh, yes. There was a story in Canada, guy's on a Greyhound bus, he's sitting there. He takes out a machete. He cuts off the head of a guy in front of him. And he started eating him. He started eating him. They let that guy out of jail, right? He's free. He's free. This is the same thing. This guy, Steve Renazizi, is out there. He's free. If you lie like this, that's not it. You're a psychopath. I fear for my family. Okay? Let's hear the rest. It's inexcusable. I am truly, truly sorry. Mm. Well, Buffalo Wild Wings and Comedy Central oh, told Buffalo us they're Wild disappointed in him and are reevaluating their relationship, but they have yet to pull him off the air. FX is actually standing by him, saying they believe the apology was sincere. Yeah, it doesn't matter. That's like apologizing for the head cutoff thing. Well, I'm really sorry. It's inexcusable. Oh, okay, thanks. He it's like me apologizing. The head cutting off thing. He changed his name to Will Baker from Vincent Lee, and yeah, then he and said, "Trust me, I'm really sorry for what I've done." 
the guy who cut a guy's head off. <laughs> yes. Imagine that a guy cuts someone's head off and he's back on the sh- What fucking government would let a guy like that back out? Why isn't that in jail forever? Because he's on meds and he's cured. Oh, he's fine. What? Why risk it? Limp Biscuit. All right, let's watch some more. Here's that Pauly Shore interview so that they were, were showing. Were and this is thanks to Xander. Xander Thank pulled you, Xander. some of these great clips. Look here. So he got a lot out of this. Uh, let's see another one. Here's some audio from, he was on Mark Marin. He did two hours talking about his little lie. Listen to this. This is from So Mark. then you go, so you so leave then I college. graduated. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's from Mark Marin, uh, his show. Listen to this one. Uh, Mark Bain. College. And your parents just, you know, convince you that there's no future. Yep. Get a safe job. Right. And then I went to, uh, I worked in Merrill Lynch. Yeah. This is like if everyone forgave Jesse Smollett. I mean, Jesse Smollett is not as bad as this. No, of course not. This is Jesse Smollett crazier. looks like a pretty stand up guy. At least Jesse had this. a reason for lying because he was trying to. Yeah. Further stop his Trump cause. and stop Trump. Yeah. This guy had no reason to further himself. So if you're going to hate Jesse Smollett, which every comedian does. Wow, like look at that. Scumbag. Every comedian in the world hates Jesse. Any comedian that's friends with Steve Renazizi who hates Jesse Smollett is a lying piece of shit. Now you know. Oh, have I shown you the truth or what? Now you know about these comedians. They're sick. Here. For a year and a half? As an accountant or broker? I was an account manager, which basically meant he I was wasn't. the liaison between the brokers and the clients. I would take people out to lunch. Take- How do you make up that you worked? He didn't even live in New York. He lived in Kansas, they said. This say. was recorded on my birthday. Really? What's your birthday? December 16th, see? Really? December 16th. Xander, write that down and remind me to buy her flowers on her birthday. <laughs> take people out to dinner. You Party know. starter. Sort of the party starter of Merrill Lynch, yeah. <laughs> Until our building got hit with a plane. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> what an ass. <laughs> it's not like he lied once and then people asked him about it and he's like, ah, shit. He shopped this story around town for 14 years and he added this to be it. This an imprisonable Yes. Offense. This is like way I want more him crazy. jail. I want him in the chair. Yes, yes. Up until you started talking about this this week, I thought that he just yeah, told I know. a lie off the top of his head and then was like, yes. fuck, 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 and then admitted it a couple weeks later. I didn't think that he... Why do you think I'm doing this? Never this forgive. So you think I'm just doing crazy. this because I am out of ideas here today? Yes, this is crazy. Yes, this is nuts. Never forgive. Already ended right there. Let's hear some more. Yeah, yeah. that's where the part. I worked on the the fifty fourth floor of the second tower. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Did you evacuate that day? I yeah, I was there, and then the first tower got hit, and we were like, you know, jostled all over the place. And then the port authority came on the loudspeaker, and they were like, "Hey, uh, explosion in Tower One. Um, things are being taken care of. Everyone, remain where you are. Stay calm. We're we're figuring things out." Yeah, people are shocked. Um, me too, Jules. To hear the detail in the lie is shocking. Never forget. And how excited he is to Jared. tell it. Yes, he's excited. And meanwhile, people are burning until their bones blacken in the fires <sighs> of that deadly day. Okay? People's uh, bones turned to ash. Remember the men who jumped out the w- no, Those guys were stupid. How do you jump out the window? It's like, try to get out. But maybe it's probably every really single easy. thing was burning except for the tiny square that they were in and they had no choice. That's what I always then think. Then try to scale the building. You know what I mean? Don't yeah. just be like, well, I guess I'll just down. You could get some of those Mission Impossible things that are like suction cups. You don't have to get anything. Try some- Believe me, there's things I could have tried. I got out of that. <laughs> I was actually in the buildings during, oh, the f- really? during the flare up. Wow. I got out just, it was easy. These people were going nuts. You know, it was like, where did I say that? You know, when you go uh, on the airplane, this is me on an airplane. I walk right on. I sit. This is other people. Oh, 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 my luggage. Ah, oh, what do I do? Ah, oh, and they're in the aisle for 45 minutes. So I, yeah, I was in 9-11 and it was super easy. I went like this. Guys, just walk down the stairs for God's sakes. Da, 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 da. I was out. I casually <laughs> walked away from the thing. Everyone else, they're just panicking. These weren't good people. All right, let's uh, hear the rest of this. And uh, I was like, well, I'm going to go check this thing out. 
So I went downstairs, walked outside, uh, saw all the pandemonium, and then he about saw the pandemonium five or six minutes later, and then it just whoosh, bang. While you were standing right there. Well, it was like underneath the giant overpass that was overhanging oh, that was right fu- by. And, uh, and all your coworkers were upstairs. Yeah, but I, 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 you know, I don't know. I couldn't tell exactly where it went in, so I had no right. idea. Right. So I called up to the office, and this they were is like, insane, right? To have this detailed of a story. Like, did he write it down and study it so that he I didn't don't know. mess up? He's a comedian. Listen, comedians lie about everything. This is their gig. Their gig is an hour-long lie. Right? So they're good at crafting a lie, saying it over and over again, punching it up. This is what they do. It was pandemonium. Like, we're on our way down. We're on our way down. And then I just started fucking booking it. Oh, my God. And I got Listen. to about West Broadway when I stopped and uh, caught my breath, and then they watched the second tower fall. Our tower fell first. It did? Yeah, yeah. The second one that got hit was the first one to fall. And then, because it was the impact was lower, so there was more weight on top, I think, is the way it was described to me. Yeah, well, there's a lot of people that listen to my podcast who would say- uh, That well, the government want, did it. Yeah, you want to know the real truth. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I can imagine. Yeah, the government This goes did. on. I don't know how much we- Do you want to hear some more of this Mark Maron thing? I mean, we've got other things that we could play. He was on the Sklar Brothers podcast as well, telling the same Look story. Look at the link that I just sent you. What do you got here? Yeah, this is, let's see what we got here. Steve Renazzisi, please forget. He has a show in Edinburgh and no. read the description Edinburgh of the show. Film Festival. Steve Renazzisi, please forget. So he's out there in Scotland doing this Edinburgh Fringe Festival show. And he's got a show called Please Forget. Please Forget is a one-man show by American comedian Steve Renazzisi that takes a comedic look into public shaming. What happens in cases where you've been legally acquitted, but you're still judged as an undesirable? What the fuck? What the fuck? So this is what he really oh, thinks about him. himself. Oh, he's still judged. He's being publicly shamed. Wow. That is sick. This is too much. I'm like furious at this guy, man. Xander says, listen to more of this. Especially because um, I lost... My whole family at 9-11. People don't know this about me. Mm -hmm. My entire family worked at Merrill Lynch. They were killed on that day. All They were all murdered by the Taliban. And uh, so this fucking kills me to hear him say this. I mean, I remember my brother's heart. He had such a good heart. And it was uh, just burned away by the fires of the towers. My mom was uh, really sweet. And now her sweetness is ash. Uh, my dad was burned as well. Everyone was burned, frankly. So <laughs> I'm uh, very pissed off. Let's hear the more of this uh, Mark Moran stuff. Thank you, guys. Don't feel bad for me. All right? Families come and go. But uh, these podcast listeners, they're here forever. Here, listen. But you were there and you saw all that. And, and like, uh, I, we had no idea. I Literally, as far as that's concerned, I had no idea what was going on till three hours into it i just thought it was two drunk idiots i didn't couldn't tell the size of the planes or anything like that i just was you like, thought really it was two drunk idiots like they were up there the going, second oh, time oh, they yeah this. the second time i was like well i something's going on here but i it, two like, drunk it idiots. did not dawn on me that well, you must have been in fucking shock i mean for fuck's sake i mean walking how- across the brooklyn bridge like it was a literally hundred thousand people oh this is the best before that I, a cab pulls up and I'm like, all right, I'm out. Let's go. This is like five hundred dollars to Brooklyn, and I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, I can only make one trip out. He the- even makes up that a cab was trying to haggle with him yeah, on the price. Uh, yeah, to out. like that never happened. Huh? This is really, I mean, really, you should be institutionalized for this. You shouldn't be able to be a parent. He's got a kid. You should be your kid should be taken oh, away. Yes, after a lie like this, they're shutting the island down. And they, yeah, he goes, this is the best. This cab tried to uh, highway rob me, you know, and take advantage of this. No, it didn't. I'm out. Let's go. And he's like, $500 to Brooklyn. And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, I can only make one trip out. They're shutting the island down. And these two brokers got in and jumped in the car and took you off. paid it? I didn't pay it. I was like, I've, what? I'm, $500? I'm an accounts manager. I'm a party <laughs> yeah, starter. Yeah, I'm, the, I'm the party starter. <laughs> 
you guys pay. I'll sit in the front seat and tell some jokes. Wow. But oh yeah, I was like, even in even in times of, of even strife, in Hila. it's how, still how just... How much did it fuck you up? I mean, mentally, because my ex-wife was to down there. She worked close by. Yeah. Here's Ashley Butterfield in our chat. He says this. This is the mind of a comedian, and this is what comedians are willing to forgive. Exactly. Every comedian is like this. They're no different. So imagine what Big J Okerson has done. Imagine what Joe Rogan has been up to. You know, imagine what Bill Burr and his uh, his wife have done for fame, fortune, and greed. Here. Yeah, and she was traumatized. I mean, outside of being married I had problems. to me, I still had dreams of like you know those falling dreams. My wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, I've had. I still have dreams. I have falling dreams. This is really fucking... I, I mean, this is sicker than I remember. I'm, like, fucking appalled here. You know? Because I care about the families. I worked on the 24th floor, and I didn't know where she was for, like, seven hours, six hours. No way! And what happened was, I got, I'd walked home and then got to my apartment, caught my breath. This really wouldn't be as bad for me if every comedian was like, fuck you, you're done. But the fact they forgive him day one, I mean, that really is, like, messing with me, man. These comedians are sick. Like, I really probably wouldn't do any this of this. This is too much to forgive. How could you possibly forgive this unless you're mentally doing the same thing? You're mentally ill. Let's, you know, watch the news, and then about three, an hour goes by, two hours go by, no her. And I'm like, oh, I now I have to call her parent and tell her she's dead. And uh, she comes walking to the door. What happened was she was on the subway in, and she was underneath the water. So because the, the Trade Center was the first stop in, in Manhattan, they right. had to back out all the subways. So she hadn't even gotten to work yet. She was stuck in the subway Thank underneath. God. None of this they didn't even know what was going on for oh my hours God. and hours and hours. And they had to back out every subway. So it took forever. And uh, we went up to the roof of our building. We smoked a joint and then decided we were going to leave. I'm like, let's go do... Looking at a smoking lower there Manhattan. There were pieces of paper by my apartment in Brooklyn that wow. had like none of this is true fucking uh I was on the roof head. of my apartment in Queens were you really yeah I mean and when, you could see everything yeah, right yeah well, I mean what I remember about that day more than anything else is it was fucking clear and beautiful crisp. Said, this is the only thing uh crazier than this is when I lied about the mask money <laughs> yeah exactly are my eyes filling up with tears <laughs> yes. <laughs> they, they are. actually are yeah they are Wow, your eyes look beautiful today. Thank you so much. All right, let's hear the rest of this, and then we're going to show you some stuff. Gets crazier. Watch this. Beautiful day. Unbelievable. Not and a sound. No. They shut everything down. There was not a fucking sound. Yep. And it was horrible yeah. because the woman who lived upstairs from me, uh, she was killed. <laughs> and, uh -huh. you know, I... It, it was just, it was awkward and horrifying, you know, because like that day, I didn't know what was going on. Then as news can't start coming, I, I literally turned my computer on. The first tower had already fallen. And I was like, was this a joke? I mean, I couldn't even process it. Really? Yeah. And then I went upstairs and you just saw just this smoke. Yeah. And then I watched the second tower go down and uh, and then my ceiling started leaking. So I, I went upstairs and I'm like, hey, what, what's going on? I mean, can you fix your fucking, and then they were all sort of like waiting to hear about the, their mother oh my god and i thought like, like, you're so I'm sorry like, you, to hear you, about it's all right I, I can it's okay no but you still gotta get this you don't want to i mean <laughs> no, that's I, damage I was, water damage in this mold and then now who dies yeah yeah exactly you 20 can years we later think about the future yeah a little bit yeah <laughs> so literally you're smoking a joint on your apartment looking at the smoldering the yep. pit that was the world trade center yep. and you're like we gotta go i'm like this is just you know it's like was, i'm was i it, played on a uh, they had this urban professional basketball league thing and, urban uh, professional basketball was it, uh six guys the on, nba on my team died <laughs> there oh were like five God. of them were six guys on my team died you hear this <laughs> shit he was on a basketball team with a bunch of brothers or canner guys that just had they had no shot you know that i mean that was they were at the floors of impact it was just, you know, oh, it's horrible. Fucking, it's just awful. So was so he also makes up that six of his friends who worked at his company, they were on a company basketball league, the Canner. What does he call it? The league. They died too. Isn't that something? They didn't die. He had no friends at the company because there was no company in that building. He didn't work at the company. Is this was this also the the moment you decided to do comedy, or had you already been? I've been doing stand up like at uh, this club. Uh, I'm sure you know it, New York Comedy Club. Oh, Al Martin. Yeah, yeah. That's a and classy then Steve joint. Aaron's. 
So then okay. you go. So you. So then I graduate. Right. That's that. That's that clip. Now things you get see better. The article that I sent you. Okay, let's see what we got here. We got more articles. We're remembering uh, Steve Renazzisi. Which We're, one? The Pete Davidson. Yeah. Pete regarding Davidson, the league star apologized for lying about 9-11. What's in here? <sighs> Just showing that comedians forgave him. Pete was like, leave him alone. He apologized. Oh, wow. Okay. So look at this. Pete Davidson, one of my good buddies. We've met several times. Uh, where's the uh, uh, Pete Davidson tweet? Take it easy on Steve Renazzisi. He reached out to me and is truly sorry. We're all so- we all sometimes lie. Oh, okay. this is what I'm talking about. Here it is. This is Pete Davidson. Listen to this. And this is what all the comedians were saying. Listen to this. Hey, take it easy on Steve Renegigi. He reached out to me and he's truly sorry. We all sometimes lie and exaggerate stories to seem cooler. Unfortunately, this was a very touchy topic, uh, very near and dear to people's hearts. But it's years later. We apologized. He owned up to it like a man. What the fuck? No, he didn't. He got caught. He got caught. What was he going to do? This was his only option. Failure's not. My beloved, you got this fail. It's got to go. Uh, this is sick. And every comedian agreed and said the same thing. I mean, that is uh, some really sick stuff. So uh, let's see this. You know what? We're going to come right back. I have to fucking go to the bathroom so bad. I got to go to the bathroom bad. So we'll be right back. And we're going to show you uh, some of Steve Renazzisi when he admits the lie. You've never seen him on Howard Stern admitting Howard Stern got the exclusive. He did this big interview on Stern. And then we're going to end it with Steve Renazzisi on Roast Battle. Okay, Comedy Central's Roast Battle. Steve Renazzisi comes back, and he's been forgiven, and he's ready to do comedy. And wow, we've seen this clip before. You're going to love seeing it again. But for now, I have to make. We'll be right back. My asshole yeah. won't close all the way anymore. I wonder if there's like a fetish for guys whose assholes are wrecked. Once your asshole's blown up, it's blown up. <laughs> I have to make. It's kind of hard to take. I have to make. Make. It's kind of hard to take. We used to line no under. You got oh, my yes, and I can't like take it from man. here. Hey, everybody. Red Bar is back. Season 18. What do you think of season 18 so far? Pretty fucking cool. Huh? We're back. We're back. Everything's fine. We're doing our little uh, Steve Renazzisi Never Forgive. 9-11 tribute here today i don't give a fuck about people who were caught in the towers i could care less you snooze you lose is what i always say to people caught in a disaster uh i care about one thing comedians telling lies and i've always cared about that and ever since i got uh, screwed over by the entire comedy scene i've sworn to show you every evil deed that they've ever done and through my uh through my learnings through my teachings i have discovered a world sicker than i ever imagined these comedians might be the cause of every problem uh uh, in this world here today Uh, believe it or not people uh, think oh comedians they're helping they are making things worse folks and count on me i have the proof so we're going over Steve Renazzisi here today on this faithful day, and we're remembering every lie that he ever told. Have you forgot where Steve Renazzisi was? I don't know how they figured it out. Have you forgotten? Yes. The Steve Renazzisi 9-11 tribute. Those were by Tappan Skins. He did a great job. Dave Gibson. Okay, very nice. Uh, Let's watch. Look at this. So he came clean. So when we last left you, he was lying, lying up a storm. We saw the news articles. Let's watch a couple clips of him coming clean on Howard Stern, shall we? And again, thanks to uh, Xander McIntosh for posting these here. One of our faithful uh, listeners here. Here's clip number one. Let's cue these up here. These are tough. Remember these Facebook clips? They're all muted, minimized. Oh, here we go. Uh, Let's hear this one. Here he is on uh, Howard Stern coming clean. 
most people don't associate me with 9-11, believe it or not. Right. They really don't. Oh, isn't that funny? Because I do! <laughs> okay, that's clip number one. Very little there. Here's another one. Uh, Xander says, he's a comedian. Half the things that come out of his mouth on stage are complete lies. Let's look at this. Here's Howie. We all know Howie. This is how we do it. You know that guy, Howie Mandel, had a show called This Is How We Do It. Very clever. Playing off the song This Is How We Do It. And between breaks and the bumpers and stuff, it goes, This Is How We Do It. But it was a Howie Mandel show. Isn't that cringe as fuck? <laughs> this is how we do it. Okay, here, uh, here he is on Stern. I've that you've lied about that you feel like you still haven't come clean like is there any other no. there's nothing like no. that this is the one thing that mm -hmm. happened yeah. to you it's like it's never going to be another call to the new york times where someone says hey by the way here's what here's something else steve exaggerated or, no. or lied about it's it's this one thing yeah and i, but I since you don't know what right. triggered it necessarily could it happen again i mean <laughs> I, I, look i don't know like you said i mean i, I don't know but what there's nothing that you know that that there is left out there to uncover. You know, I'm just, mm. you know, like I said, you know. Okay. He claims that he's never told any other lies and that he's As fine. If. But they go, if you were to tell this lie, aren't you going to be doing lies like this all the time? You know, and they mentioned, because he's sitting there saying, uh, I don't know what caused this. I don't know why I did it. Well, it's like, okay. Well, then you don't know what you're capable of. You don't know what's going to come next. And that's what they were asking. He swears. Oh, he's never going to do it again. He's probably done it a hundred times. Here's another one. The biggest revelation of the Howard Stern interview. Pete Davidson is a bad, bad guy. Uh-oh. Let's hear this. Uh, of course, I've got to... Is Unmute. I've got to expand. Give me a sec. Here we go. Uh, Pete Davidson, who's a, a comedian, is on Saturday Night Live. And uh, he, his father died in in the trade center yeah, and trade um, center. we spoke that day um and i apologized to him and you know the thing that he said to me he's like well you know he's like obviously he's like people make mistakes he goes i'm 21 and i'm gonna make a ton of mistakes he's like but Ooh. the one thing i oh, want to guess you are isn't that some foreshadowing we've uh, been following your errors and blunders and mistakes ever since even season 17 started which was last year so yes you have wow pete davidson knew he was going to be a piece of shit. Interesting. It's like, well, you know, he's like, obviously, he's like, people make mistakes. He goes, I'm 21 and I'm going to make a ton of mistakes. He's like, but the one thing I want to make sure is that I'm the 9-11 comedian. You're not the 9-11 comedian. He's like, whoa. Because <laughs> Pete Davidson's dad, I always forget this. Pete Davidson's dad was finished in 9-11. They X'd him in them towers. So um, I want to make one thing clear. He said to him, he cornered him and he said, I'm the 9-11 comedian, not you. That's sick. And I'm going to make a ton of mistakes. But he could be lying, of course. <laughs> yeah. like, but the one thing I want to make sure is that I'm the 9-11 comedian. You're not the 9-11 comedian. It's like, I want to make sure that you understand that. Right. So right away, he was like, it's, it, you're going to be okay. It's, it's okay. You know? It's not okay with me. Let's get that perfectly clear. And hopefully this blows up. You know, we're going to put all this on YouTube. We hope some new people see it. Every year I want to rhyme, there's a new batch of kids being born every day. I want them to know. I go to the local hospitals. I go, you got any new babies? I go, yeah. I go, can I speak to them? They go, of course. I go in there and I tell them this whole thing. Because I don't want anybody forgetting about this. And you know, they're not going to teach this in schools, which is another thing I'm working on. I'm working with the mayor. What is her name? Lightfoot. Lori Lightfoot. Lori Lightfoot so that I could get in schools and do a uh, assembly once a year with the kids uh, about this to teach the kids what happened to Steve when it's easy. And in that assembly, I'm also showing them how they could earn points and get cool things like disc men and uh, <laughs> water bottles and stuff if they sell enough stuff for the school. Uh, let's look at this. This is my favorite, and this is going to be our final piece today on Steve when it's easy. We're just remembering his lie, of course. Um, Steve Renazizi, after he was forgiven, all was forgotten, he went on Comedy Central's Roast Battle. 
with what's this guy's name? Rick Ross. What is the guy's name? Uh, Jeff Ross. Jeff Ross. Not Rose. Jeff Ross. And he was doing a roast battle. And this was basically his first major thing after the scandal. He was back. You know, he did many stand up gigs. The comedy store accepted him back. Whitney Cummings loves him. Eliza Schlesinger thinks he's great. He's in with that whole Netflix crowd of comedians. Every comedian loves him. And uh, he did Roast Battle. And he's up against this guy, Sam Morell. Now, you don't know Sam Morell. He's a very small-time comic. You might have heard his name. But Sam Morell dated a comic that's been on this show, a female comedian who I can't stand, named Beth Stelling. Yes, Beth Stelling. Now, Beth Stelling had a little scandal of her own a few years ago where she accused her boyfriend, Kale Hartman. Now, you're going to love this. There's a comedian, Beth Stelling. She accused her boyfriend, Kale Hartman, of beating her. And she took to Facebook and posted this picture of her thighs. And they had all these black and blues all over her thighs. I've never seen so many black and blues on a thigh. And she goes, I've been beaten by my boyfriend, Cal Hartman. Now, Cal Hartman was an improv comic at the time. He was banned from all things comedy. Not Bill Burr's little stupid sight, but the literal meaning. He was ostracized. He was kicked to the curb. Now, funny enough, this relates to another one of our fellow fools, Mr. 7.6. I'm looking at a solid 7.6. Gavin McInnes. Now, Gavin McInnes took in Kale Hartman, the guy that Beth Stelling accused of beating her up, this comedian. And he shopped around Kale Hartman for quite some time going, he's innocent. He's, uh, we don't have any proof. Now, let's go back to this roast battle. We've got Steve Renazizi versus Sam Morrell. Sam Morrell at the time is dating Beth Stelling. Okay? The abused woman. Abused by Cal Hartman, who is now friends with Gavin McInnes and goes on boat rides with him and lives at his house. Okay? Because Gavin McInnes takes in abusers because he doesn't want men to ever look guilty. Right? No man should ever be accused of hitting. And if they are, Gavin's there to defend you. Because he likes hitting, apparently. Here they are in roast battle. Isn't this funny how this all relates? And Beth Stelling, by the way, sat right where you're sitting, Jules. On this show. In that seat. On that microphone. Beth Stelling was a comedian here in Chicago. I had her on the show. I did my famous banana bit. In front of her. So Beth Stelling's on the show. This is years and years ago before PC culture ever was around. And I said, uh, I told this story on the show. I said, uh, I was in this bar the other day and it was interesting. This black chick was hitting on me. Never been hit on by a black chick. So she's hitting on me. She's flirting. And I'm sitting there going, you know, is she out of her mind? Does she know who I am? And uh, anyways, I was being friendly and me and the black chick were drinking. And... Uh, and uh, I went to the bathroom. When I came back, I couldn't find the black chick anywhere. Couldn't find her. So I'm looking all around this bar and uh, couldn't find her. And uh, all of a sudden I see her. You know, no wonder I couldn't see her. I see her in the corner of the bar, sitting on the ground, Indian style, eating a banana. <laughs> Just a racist joke about how right Beth Stelling sitting where you're sitting right now Jules starts tearing up she starts literally crying I'm and I go tearing up. I go Beth what's wrong you know it was like 10 minutes after I told that joke and Beth goes I just can't believe how racist you were being and I go what I was appalled uh cut to the end of the story Beth Stelling left we have never spoken since, until now. Beth, we've got your boyfriend battling Steve Renazizi on roast battle. Isn't this funny how uh, everything relates? 
Here's Steve Renazzi. This is Comedy Central's roast battle. Steve Renazzi's first time coming out into the public since the big scandal. Let's see what happens here. They're going to verse each other first. An ad from someone. Let's find out. It's Comedy Central. They're going to make us watch an ad. But it's worth it. You know what? We should give them some money for playing this, right? We're getting a lot out of it. Here. This isn't a hobby. There is no side gig. There is no side gig. Dance isn't just a career. It's how I'm. Never gets old. They say yes, a classic. Now I say true to the core. New York. Okay. Liar. Oh, Here they name. are. Wow. Look, Look at that. It starts out. Here's Brian Moses. Brian Moses, he's the uh, MC, the moderator of the Rose Battle. Have you seen the show? There's Steve Renazzisi. There's Sam Morrell. They've set this up already. Sam Morrell versus Steve Renazzisi. And Brian Moses goes, all right, you ready to roast? Liar versus blah, blah, blah. And everyone goes, oh. So they are making fun of him for being a liar. They're giving him some shit, which is nice. Watch this. This isn't a hobby. Wow. Damn it. (laughs) <laughs> Wait a minute here. Oh, wow. You can skip through the ad. I, I can't believe it. Okay, that starts at 15 seconds. Remember remember that. Here. New York. Liar. Oh. New York. Liar. I don't know why they're calling Sam New York, but they're calling Steve Renacisi liar, which gets into his head. So Steve thinks he's back. And let me break this down for you. I've seen this clip many, many times. I love this clip. Steve thinks he's back. He's been welcomed. This is, and we just saw that he wants to go to Edinburgh and go, please forget. This should be over. In his head, he thinks this should be over. So no when, one should be allowed to give him shit for it ever, is yeah. what he thinks. So when Brian calls him a liar, that gets into his head. And he goes, really? You're all still thinking this? Duh. Watch this. This is so fucking good. Watch. Are we ready? <laughs> Cheers. Let's roast. Let's roast. Watch this. Yes, I lied about being in the World Trade Center. But to my defense, I was a first responder to Sam's girlfriend's Instagram view. Ah! Did you just see what happened here? Oh my God. Yes, I lied about being in 9 11, but I was a first responder to Sam's uh, girlfriend's. ah! And then he fucks it all up because he's in his head. So what he wanted to say, and this isn't even a good joke, I was a first responder to Sam's Instagram's abuse scandal. Something like that. But nobody in the crowd or watching knows about his girlfriend's abuse thing. That's like an inside thing that only me and the comedians know about. Yeah. So the public wouldn't even know about that. And he was trying to make a first responder joke. How fucking good is that? <laughs> this is ultimate humiliation. They're saying, look at this here. We'll watch it again. Oh. This is so fucking good. Here we go. Here we go. Let's roast! Yes, I lied about being in the World Trade Center. But to my defense, I was a first responder to Sam's girlfriend's Instagram why couldn't you so you were so fucking nervous Gee, you couldn't even get it out like how what the long fuck? after he was exposed did this come out i don't know it was like the same year man it was like his first time back on tv i think how amazing is this this gets better by the way you would think after that he goes okay okay let me regroup i'll be fine right he's a professional comedian after all here, let's watch. Yes, this is so good. I lied about being in the World Trade Center. But to my defense, I was a first responder to Sam's girlfriend's Instagram view. Ah, f- Whoa! Whoa! Are you so glad I told you all about that abuse thing, too? I really got it all figured out here, huh? With all the connections, Beth Stelling, she's been here. I told you the whole story. Because without that whole story, this is kind of meaningless. You wouldn't know what this was. And the people at home don't know what this is. That's why I'm here. So that you never forget. Let's keep watching. Sam's girlfriend's Instagram view. Ah, Whoa! Oh, shit. 
Okay, uh, now you would think, now it's Sam's turn. You would think Sam has this in the bag, right? Like, dude, you just got your fucking trophy handed to you. Sam's going to win. Now, Sam is such a bad comedian. He's dating the liar abuse girl. Not to call her a liar. I don't know. But uh, Sam fucks it up, too. Sam, how could, ba- how could what you? What a gift to be given what Steve a gift. Ren as easy as your opponent. But also. watch. Now Sam's going to bomb as well. Watch this. Oh. Hey. Oh. On a scale of one to ten, I'm going to give that a ground zero, Steve. Oh. Okay, oh. Jeremiah Watkins. Jeremiah Watkins comes out because they're the wave. They do this thing where they do act outs. Jeremiah Watkins jumps out and pretends he's a tower falling. How funny is that? The cute guy. Jeremiah Watkins runs out because they've got this group, this comedy troupe called the wave who comes out and does act em outs in between jokes. It's a lot to take in. <laughs> he pretends he's one of the towers falling. Let's see that again. On a scale of one to ten, I'm going to give that a ground zero, Steve. Perfect. Oh! The two towers. Wow. It's... So it's him and another guy pretending they're the tower. That's kind of fucking funny. I'm sorry, man. Jeremiah's funny. <laughs> to pretend they're the two towers. All right, let's watch the rest of this. It's very good. Shit. Oh. Oh. Hey. Oh. On a scale of one to ten, I'm going to give that a ground zero, Steve. Perfect. Oh. David Spade. Oh, shit. Right. First joke, first joke. Okay. <laughs> Sam, uh, Sa- Sam. <laughs> Steve is easy again Get now. Oh, oh, to hundred word minimum. Know. Sam, I can't believe you're here, man. You lost to a mime on America's Got Talent last week. A f-ing mime, dude. Can you believe that? Jesus Christ. I mean, if you wanted to just have career suicide, you could have lied about being 9-11 and kept your dignity. fuck a second stink wow you could have just let slide. and there's nothing worse than when a comic is trying to be slick and slips up his line you know well, messes there's no up coming back from that there's no coming back from fumbling a line as a comic you need to have that down let's watch that again steve run doing terrible here and he deserves to do terrible i want him to do terrible every time watch this again <laughs> First joke, first joke. (laughs) Sam, uh, Sam. (laughs) Get it out, buddy. These jokes to a hundred word minimum. Sam, I can't believe you're here, man. You lost to a mime on America's Got Talent last week. A f***ing mime, dude. Can you believe that? Jesus Christ. I mean, if you wanted to just have career suicide, you could have lied about being 9-11 and kept your dignity. Steve has never performed in a roast before, but he did lie about uh, running away from a pretty huge one. Oh. Wait, what? Wow, even David Spade <laughs> considers that it's. Wait, is that the famous actress from uh, Requiem for a Dream here? Jennifer Connolly? Yeah, Should wow. I, is that her? I don't think so, oh. but it looks like her. Uh, wow, look at that. So Sam is given this gift of Steve bombing in front of everybody, triggered by his old lies, and whiffs it, you know. Kevin Hart is on the panel of judges. You've got David Spade on the panel of judges. Some beautiful women. Tony Hinchcliffe's old girlfriend here, Eyebrows McKenzie, is there. That's his old girlfriend. Tony Hinchcliffe used to date that woman. Wow. She's not pretty. Uh, tr- the lighting is very dark there. Uh, and uh, David Spade goes, wait, what? This gets better. Let's keep watching. Never performed in a roast before, but he did lie about uh, running away from a pretty huge one. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. Um, Sam uh, was born with a silver spoon in his mouth, not because his adopted parents are loaded, but because that's how his birth mother tried to scoop him out of her. Uh, nope. Okay. Sorry. Traction. I, I needed one. That's all I needed. Okay. No. Steve's kids are six and four, which means someday they'll be nine and 11 and will only claim to be there for them. <laughs> yeah. 
I think we met. That's three. Right. Keep it going. Right, Sam. Steve. Okay, now the round is over. They're going to be judged. Should we? Uh, I don't know if there's anything exciting here, nah. but we should watch the oh. judges. Let's just see. Maybe they say something about how uh, awkward Steve is, and we get to see Steve squirm. So let's just see what they say. All right. All right. After seeing this, I wish I died on 9 11. Ah, <laughs> oh, very funny. This was fing depressing, you guys. Wow. <laughs> Holy this mackerel. Was a, uh, this is a little bit of a, a mess, but Steve, first of all, I, I appreciate the balls of coming out. No. Thank you. you know it's a tough job. You know you're going to get hammered, but you came out. I don't appreciate that. I find that to be more psychotic than anything. Go away. I would appreciate it if he just, yeah. Yes, go hiding. away. It's That is a lie you can't come back from. I don't appreciate the balls. To me, that's a mental illness here. You came back. You want to be still in entertainment after all that? No, no, no. No balls. Craziness. Uh, the only thing I could say uh, negative about Sam, because you, you, you were uh, great, is... Um, Maybe more uh, jokes that weren't about, uh, you know, the 9-11 lie. No. So can I respond uh, to that? I think, sure. you know, if you're roasting Sandusky, you're not going to talk about football. So yeah. Yeah, okay. There you go. <laughs> Look at Steve. Top so, I thought, hey. Kevin Hart loves it. And it's like, Kevin Hart, you lied about being in a car crash. That's coming. You lied about a lot of things. About uh, killing gays. Remember where you were into that? So I wouldn't laugh too hard here, Kevin Hart. That's true. I thought, Steve, uh, you, you started to climb back. You got KO'd a little early with yeah. that 100-word joke. And, uh, but wow, 100-word joke. At least you joke. came back, and you got a few in. And then uh, I don't know if it, it, it won it for you, but it, it helped, and it kept you in the game. And at least it made it a little bit of a fight, right? No. Nah, f*** being nice. That, yeah. shit, wow. that shit stunk. That shit was uh, awful. Yeah, Kevin Hart. Nah, fuck that. That shit stunk. I lied about being in a car crash. You're a barracuda. I hope you can never walk again, you spineless fuck. Uh, here's why, okay? Rule number one of roasting, you don't show weakness, okay? Wow. Steve yep. came out and stumbled on his first bit. He showed fear. He showed weakness. Ah, and said look at that fucking loser. <laughs> Imagine you're on national TV comedy. And look at that. Oh. Nah, fuck that. Steve stunk. He showed weakness. He showed fear. Look at you. And every year you should go through this again. You're a terrible... Ter Look at his face, folks. Wow. I didn't know Kevin Hart did this. You know, props to Kevin Hart for doing this. Let's see some more. Kevin Hart. Oh, wow, look at Kevin Hart uh, gif in our chat there. And when Sam do with that, he smelt it. Hit him with the ground zero. Boom. Oof. But then after that, Sam got a little confident. Yeah. Sam got confident, got wordy. His next one didn't hit the way he wanted the two. Then yeah. after that, Steve came back with one. The scooping of the, the come out the mouth yeah. shit. You know, it get a little nasty for me. I'm not going to yeah. lie. Shit get a little nasty. Same. But, but I was like, all right, okay. I see where you're going. He's sure. coming back a little bit. But then after that, I think Sam kept hitting him with jabs and the fact that Steve knew he was dealing with something that was a problem. He's like, this is a real issue for me. Yeah. I lied about this and it's starting to hurt. I can see that he was like, nice. this, just let it go. And Sam kept on hammering it. 9-11. You lied. You lied. You yes. lied. Yes. And Steve was Tell like, move on. And Sam was like, nope, your kids going to be liars. 9-11. Uh, that's almost like a fuck you. Like, he hates it too. You know, Kevin Hart is almost saying right here, yeah, you lied, you lied. Your kids are like, he's enjoying it. And that's how people should be, not like Big J. Hey, he's a great guy. We, I, lie about, I lie about being straight. He loved it. He wouldn't let it go. And for that, persistence will always win. So, Sam, I'm going to give it to you. Yeah. Right? You say persistence. All right. All right. Roasting a lot of times is about sort of a new beginning and sort of restarting where you've been in life and where you're going. We've seen that at the celebrity no roast. Restarting. I think roast battle. No. Laughing at yourself is so important. No. Putting it out there. So you're a great guy, Steve, for doing this. You're a good sport. And no. That having, you're a great guy. That having been said. Hug it out. Hug it that's out. That's all fine and well. But Sam Morrell. Oh, Sam Morrell. Sam Morrell, Sam Morrell everybody. Wow, look at that. Bad Boris K. Bad Boris K. That uh, rap 
What's up, our Steve Renazizi Never Forgive 9 11 special? Let's throw to tap and skins, huh? Thank you so much. The rest of the world hears you, and the people who knock these buildings down will hear all of us soon. Never forget 9 11. I watched the second plane hit the second tower. Liar. Liar. I watched the second plane hit our tower. Never forget 9-11. I watched the second plane hit the second tower. Liar. Liar. Bang. I watched the second plane hit our tower. Take that back. Watch the second plane hit. Take that back. Watch the second plane hit. Don't need to lie about that. Watch the second plane hit. 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 Cross the Brooklyn Bridge. Walked across the Manhattan Bridge. Liar. Liar. Take that back. Take that, take that back. Don't need to lie about that. Take that back. Take that. Take that. Don't need to lie about that. I have a dream. I watched the second plane hit the second tower. Liar. And one of those dreams. Liar. Is I watched the second plane hit the second our tower. tower. Steve never forgets 9-11. I watched the second plane hit the second tower. Liar. Liar. Bang. I watched the second plane Liar. hit our tower. I want to thank Steve for being a part of this fun evening. George Bush. Thank Steve for giving us a chance to laugh tonight. He's a, he's a fine talent. Steve never forgets. Steve never forgets. All right. Steve never forgets. Steve never forgets. Look at that. George Bush himself. That was Tappan Skins. Great job.